Hello everybody and welcome once again to New Mathcraft or Pressure Ice in Minecraft 115. So today we are going to have a look at the program controller um, and how you can actually use it. It's a pretty neat piece this and it's actually really very fast when it's got the speed upgrade in. But first of all we're going to do another program where we're going to use a drone for doing very similar to what we're actually going to do with the controller. So let's get started. Right, here's the program. It appears to be complicated. It's actually not that complicated. All I'm doing really is setting up positions here. So we've got a centerpiece here, which is set at Y64, and this is the radius here. And we'll have a quick look at those in a second. And the X is the same place. Um, the only difference is is the Z coordinate. So 64 minus, two, minus 240. And then we've got a sign, a controller, and a chest. Now the controller and the chest are the same place. All I'm doing is using the controller to take items out and put using the chest to put stuff in when it's being collected. And then when it's it's got a landing position here, which is one block in front of the sign. Um, so then it comes along here and it does this. The first thing it checks whether has center has been initialized. Normally when you first start the program or you put the drone down, it's not been initialized, so it comes through here the first, only once and then comes back to the start here. So the second time around it's already been initialized. Count we don't need anymore. That was for some well actually that is used as it happens. Um and then it comes to the controller here and picks up a supreme impact and a pickaxe. And then it goes for each position in this in this thing. So let's just set up those positions. I really do need to use this tool here. It's got the wrong positions at the moment. I'll set them up and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. I'll be back in a second. So I've got this um, GPS area tool set up to, to these two positions here, and it's drawing a line. Now we don't actually want a line, it's, you know, probably it's actually a filled box, as I think is what it is. So let's just come and right click this. You'll see these two positions which match the other, and you can change the area type. So the, by default we have a box, and it's filled. What we want to do is we want to have a cylinder that is a hot tube, and it is a... Or, it's on the y-axis now the y-axis is the vertical axis so we'll get a, a circle so let's have a look at that like this and it's centered on this piece here and because that's the first position and it's and the x the rain, radius of it is the y position like this so that's going to dig around this area what of course i can do while i'm doing this i could remove these trees because they're in the way um it, but it doesn't really matter we can just leave those down like that so you see <laughs> supremium axis is reasonably effective <laughs> in fact I don't need to do anything this, the rubbish drone should come and pick these up anyway so let's get this have a look at the rest of this program and then put it down and get it going so the first thing I've got to do it's got to import from this these chests I haven't put those into here to get them into the controller you can use a hopper you can use a drone or you can use some tubing now I haven't got any piping in this mod so pack so we're, we're basically stuck so you can't see whether it's in here by right clicking but if you use the one probe by pressing shift you can see it's got both those two in it if i want to get them out i just turn this lever on and activate this hopper because at the moment this hopper has got is activated on high signal so when you activate it it then pulls the items out of here and puts them into this chest up there now if i'm doing that while the program's running it's going to take the the two tools out which is not what i want to achieve <laughs> so let's get to carry on with this program so the next thing it does here is sets increments count actually doing count for each position that's what it's doing then it's setting up the dig first position which is set to position now position is coming from here so it's the first position on this circle that we've got here and then what it does is setting up their second dig position, which is one, well, actually subtracting one from the y, uh, x, one from the z, and six down. That's the second dig position. And then it's got, a, I've got to collect. And these are basically first call means first collection point. So we're taking from the first dig point and we're going a little bit further out. And then we're going to the second collection point, which is the second dig point, and going a little bit further out as well, or further in, whichever way you look at it. Then it's going to go to pause and update this sign here. And it's going to update the sign with the, the position, the first point, the second point, and the count. Then it's going to dig. And at the moment I've got it set to requires a digging tool. If I don't if I don't have a required digging tool, then it'll 
dig by itself, which is not what I wanted to do. And then after it's done, and it's got limit re interactions, we're not limiting the interactions, and then we're going to pick the items up. The, the rubbish drone will probably pick most of these items up anyway. And when it's picked them up, if its inventory has got more than 128 in it, then it's going to go to dump. So dump, what this does is it puts them into this chest, which in fact is the same position as the controller, and it doesn't dump these two items out of here. In fact, it makes no difference. If it, no, you don't want to do that, otherwise it wouldn't be able to dig again. And then carries on back to this position. So if it's, that's fairly straightforward, but let's have a look at in action. It's much more important. Let's click the button, make sure it's programmed, put it down, Let's see what it does. So it should come along here, take the tools. You can see it's got in its hand. That's good. Oh, that's the right place. Now it's digging around here. In fact, there's a slight, a slight bug. <laughs> and you can see it's, it's actually digging up stone. It's not going and it, it's not digging up anything else. Because I've got the wrong. Well, actually, while it's doing that, let's have a look at what's slightly wrong here. It doesn't matter very much as it happens because it's moving along one piece at a time. The, what the one I've got here is this dig area here. This requires a digging tool, but I didn't look at this. And I've set it to a cylinder tube, so it's dilling, digging a cylinder tube down each time. But because it's moving one position at a time, it really makes very little difference. I'm just going to go and dump this stuff over here. But like that. And eventually it's going to come around here and dig it all up, as you can see. In fact, it's actually picking stuff up itself. Now it's it's full, so it's now going to put those into here. So let's have a look. So now we've got 59 dirt, 48 stone, and 23 granite, and it moves around. So while it's doing that, let's just get rid of these trees because they're only uh, I'll get rid of all these trees but one, I think, because they're only in they're in the way for the purposes of this demonstration. Don't need them in the way. Doesn't drop very much that one. Right, good. The rubbish collector comes up big these. I'm not sure how much space the rubbish collector chest has got at the moment, but we shall see. And as you can see, it's actually doing a very good job down here. The, there is one slight problem with the area position it picked, and that was because um, it's already got caves down here. Let's have a quick look and have a look for ourselves. There was an entrance over here somewhere. I think I had an entrance. And like this and come up here but there were some cave you might have noticed that at the very beginning and there are some caves around not here as it happens but down here there's some caves and usually a mob around here and I'll just let it get on but I'll come back when as soon as it's finished Well, I might as well come back before it's finished because we can actually have a look at this. This is also being fixed. You can now drag this around, which is great. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's going to a position. It's updating the sign. It's digging. And then when it's finished digging, it clicks up items. Come back to position here. It's obviously past that condition. And goes around here like this. And you see what it's, it's doing that fairly quickly as it happens. As you can see, it's pretty fast. And you can hear it's fairly fast. So let's just have a look at that again. Just press Control U, because we should see in a second. Here we go. Now it's off to the dump its stuff off. And for what I can do now is I can turn this on, um, and you can turn it on because it, it's not got any tools in there now. So it can simply empty all of the contents out, and then prevent the control this controller getting full. It's nearly finished. You can see it won't take much longer before it's finished. And it's back over here to empty out its inventory again. So look. I press shift on it. So it's got quite a lot of stuff in it. You can see it's 300 blocks. It's picked up three torches. Um, so that should just have enough space to empty it all out into here. And I could speed it up with a speed upgrade because this is an omnidirectional hopper. Now it looks like it's actually finished. So it's going to come over here. Oh no, not yet. It's got one more bit to to deal with. So it's going round for the last time, I think, and it's updating this count and positions here. So you can see it's gone 62 times around, uh, and its current position is that one. So the first and last are being calculated each time it goes round. 
so you can see how it works. Oops, wrong button. I don't know why I pressed sign. So it's probably finished now, I think. It's doing a little bit more, but I'm not quite sure what it's doing when it's it goes around the second time. Let's have a look at the program, see what it is actually doing. So it's digging from low to high, and it's probably just carrying on around the loop. It's got much, it's not got much to do now, so it should finish. And as soon as it does finish, it should exit out and come over here and die. And to be honest with you, I don't know how many how many counts it's got. Here it goes, now it's got the suicide piece, it's, you know, it's got to go to this position here, so it has finished, comes here and dies. In fact, I would have, should have made it also dump its chest contents off at the very last position here. So that's it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reload the game as it was, and we're going to use a different program. So I'll see you in a second. Right, I'm back. We've got a new program in here, a very simple one. It's just basically dig and pick up items. And we're going to and this area has got an area, it's got two areas here. It's got the first area, which is a cylinder of type filled, and it's on the y-axis. We can right-click this and then it's subtracting from that another cylinder on the y-axis with a slightly narrower. Actually, this was a tip that gave this dish, dish gave me because I was got stuck with this to be honest with you. So now we can preview the area like this and we can have a look at this the area it's going to dig it's going to basically dig a big circle like this um from this height downwards so anything in the way i removed the trees because they were getting in the way of being able to see what's going on so let's have a look at now let's just turn that off again it doesn't matter which piece you can use you can use this one to turn it off if not use the other one to set it up and you'll see here we've got two points to set up a cylinder you've got two points the red point one is the first point and the green point which is down here is the second point and this is the radius and this is the center so now to convert this into an area like that all we have to do is we say we would like to have a cylinder which is actually a tube in this case because we want to see it and in the y-axis like that and then when we look at this you can see what's going on like that so this is the outer point and then the inner point will be two blocks inside it so let's see how long this this program does the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to put into this program controller by pressing shift we can see what's in it from the uh, one probe which we attached to our helmet so i'd like to put in it to the silk touch pick and i'd also like to put in the paxel so we can see that they're in here by holding shift down again they are good so now we can pro make sure we program the drone to be the correct make sure it's correct program in it it's called test drone this one i probably need to grab hold of the um if it's around because i would like to demonstrate something and i don't see it let's just throw something down like this and then the rubbish collector should come and pick it up now oh, i need some magnet off first of all of course because i was picking up stuff let's just do that again there it is let's see if we can get it before he goes away i'm going to miss it no, got it just in time, good. So, let's put the drone into here. We put it into this and turned it round, which wasn't a good idea, never mind. <laughs> it doesn't really matter that much as it happens as well for what we're doing. Um, that's the front side. So let's put the drone into it. You put it into the gear slot here. You'll notice it's got, I've got no power in it because we're not going to need power in the pod pack. We've got max speed upgrades and 12 inventory upgrades. The inventory upgrades will hold what's been picked up. So here's the test drone. Let's just click, chief click it into here and watch what it does. So as you can see, it's going to dig a hole around here. And it's going to, and it's working very fast. Now I have had some problems with this particular drone when I've set requires a uh, tool. And at the moment you'll see here I've got required a tool. If it's not got a tool then it shouldn't do anything. But I had this requires digging tool here. And when I had that set, with or without tools it didn't do anything. So that's but now it's working just fine now. 
so it should do 256 bits and then pick up the rest of it now as far as I can see we've got more than 256 blocks in this particular piece it doesn't matter how many I do anyway it doesn't seem to be picking up any pieces we go around here jump over sounds like it's almost finished unfortunately we've got caves down here which doesn't make which doesn't make life any easier um, I probably could have picked a better spot to do this in but never mind it's just the way it's done so let's turn on my magnet and pick up the bits that we've got around here we should also see the the, the mini drone somewhere it usually sits around here when it's finished but as you can see it didn't pick up almost anything I don't expect it to pick up stuff that's fallen down here but I do expect it to pick up stuff here so next thing let's have a look at what we've actually got in this chest we've got one stone and one dirt so it didn't do very much did it <laughs> so let's just put the rest, the rest of the stuff in here I've certainly got four stacks which is 256 so it should have picked up stuff as you can see it didn't do and we've got stone which means that the silk touch picks was being used there we go so that's that demonstrating that the way to make a moat now I'm going to go and visit the village and we shall have a look at what's been happening there basically the, the village became almost extinct there were just two villages left so I actually set up an infinite village builder and we're going to have a look at that I'll see you in a second as you can see I have done the moat and I've been all around the side uh, unfortunately I developed this second program after I built the the moat but there's a fair few <laughs> to say the least um, iron golems are out here I'm not quite sure why I've got quite so many and there's quite a lot of um, mechanic mechanics there was one or two farmers not very many um, but here was the platform where I was doing the villager breeding so it's an infinite village breeder but I'm I'm giving them no more food so they're not breeding anymore I hope uh, the, the food is here there's there's a few pieces here which are which are being farmed by another by a drone I actually got I wrote another program to do the drone you can see we've got a, I'm not sure if there's an armor of somebody else I've, this is an armor and I hadn't also realized maybe you have already already know this if you look at these these guys here on their tunics you'll see that they've got things like this one here is diamond he's got a diamond down here diamond pattern these guys are grey as you can see now grey basically means they're novices but they're giving me this good discounts <laughs> as you can see that's not too bad and I haven't done anything well I have actually I've been very I've been all of them are giving me discounts so this one here for instance I can get one transistor for one emerald I can get a uh, PCB for 15 emeralds and the way you do that is you basically convert them to a zombie uh, villager and then heal them and you'll see here the emerald ones these are, these are experts not yet updated to master and this one's giving me um, puzzle pieces for six thirty one emeralds so I get 60 which are actually a lot easier to make and some of the guys are really good and I think I've given them some names as well so that one's given me puzzle pieces uh, this one's called Crate Aid, and he's given me all sorts of bits and pieces. He's cheaper, I think he's cheaper on the PCB, I'm not sure. But you've got this explosive mini guy, that's great. <laughs> I like that one. So they've all got names around here, if, they, if they've got any good trades. Though so he hasn't got any good trades, because he hasn't been done yet anyway. They're all discounted, because... And yet I haven't upgraded this one. So all you need to do is take some emeralds and upgrade them. Let's go back and have a quick look at... I'll turn on the jetpack again. Oops, I need to go into builder mode. And you can see the base. So this is getting towards night time, as you can see, because they all come and cuddle, cuddle around the, uh, the bell at night time. Uh, but I think they're reasonably well protected. And this was where I was doing my uh, villager breeding. Unfortunately, my villager, uh, my zombie that I had, came to we got killed by an iron golem i think they killed him through the wall actually so there we have one thing and it was all set up nicely going i could put the villager in here and he was getting he was getting put he didn't have to do anything because he's blocked i actually had three charging um 
yes, charging stations across here. And the drone dropped him into this, and then I could basically put it in. It dropped him in like this, and they couldn't get out because of the charging stations, and neither could the um, zombie villager get out. So when he got converted to a zombie, um, when the zombie, so when the zombie villager got converted, um, the mechanic got converted to a zombie villager, and he was healed again, then you get discounts. It's as simple as that. Well, that's it for this episode. I've actually just gone back a little bit in time. Um, well, the drone's actually working, so we can see. And these were the actual measuring points I was, I was using the slime blocks to measure bits out to see how things go, how things went. Anyway. Until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.